much for sticking with me through these announcements. Let us pray as we open up tonight's worship. Father, we are here to worship you, and we are here to, to sing our praises to you, Father. You deserve all of, our, all of the glory, all of our praise. Father, I pray that you bless this service and you place your hand over Kathy, Roy, and Tom as they lead us in worship tonight. Father, I, I please let your word be heard through Tom's testimony and his message, and let this service be a blessing to you. Father, and let the, the service be heard by those who need to hear the message. Father, you know who these people are, and I pray that you help us to share this message that we are going to hear tonight through the music and through the testimony with others to bring you glory. Father, we thank you for all the work that you have done and you continue to do for those who are here and all over the world. We pray that we continue to see you in every single aspect of everything. Father, because we know that you are always working all around us. Father, this evening we ask that you, you fill this place with your mercy, that you fill this place with your love, and that you fill this place with your comfort, Father. We thank you for being present at all times and being in our lives and being all around us. We are here to worship you and all you do, Father. You deserve all of our praises. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm now going to invite Roy and Kathy up. Thank you. I, I never understand, so, you know, <clears throat> my height doesn't change very much between when I set the microphone and then when I come back up, but it always moves. Uh, I, no, I don't think it was, I, unless you brought it up and then pushed it back down too low. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Sarah's fault. All right. So I'll bet you guys know this. So, um, you know, uh, feel free to stand and sing or sit and sing. I don't know what your uh, um, uh, tradition is here, but um, uh, but sing out. Um, we, we are... We are singing, one of the things you've heard a million times is we're singing to an audience of one, okay? So we are singing. What Kathy and I are doing up here is help, helping us coordinate our worship to God. So. We're singing, you are the Lord. Well, you are the Lord. The famous one, famous one, great is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your glorious, glorious, great is your fame beyond the earth. For all you've done yet to do with every breath I'm praising you desire of the nations and every heart you alone are God you alone are God you are the Lord the famous one, famous one, great is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare, the heavens declare, your glorious, glorious, great is your fame beyond the earth. The morning star, the morning star is shining through and every eye is watching you revealed by nature and miracles oh miracles you are beautiful you are beautiful oh you are the Lord the famous one famous one great is your name in all the earth the heavens declare the heavens declare your glorious glorious great is your fame beyond 
earth. You are the Lord. Oh, and you are the Lord. The famous one, famous one. Great is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your glorious, glorious, oh, great is your fame in all the earth great is your name great is your name in all the earth you are great lord great is your name in all the earth thank you jesus thank you jesus lord we worship you we praise you holy spirit fill this place cloven tongues of fire. Fill this place with your presence. Fill this place so that this will be a place where your kingdom comes, where your will is done. Lord, we love you and we sing of your love for us. He is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of his wind and a mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us oh oh how he loves us how he loves us oh and oh how he loves and oh how he loves us oh oh how he loves us how he loves us oh we are his portion and we are his portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we're all sinking Heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss And my heart beats wildly inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets When I think about the way He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how He loves us Oh, how he loves, he loves, he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves, and oh, how he loves, and oh, how he loves us oh oh how he loves us how he loves us oh no and oh how he loves us oh oh how he loves us how he loves us oh he loves oh he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves he loves us oh, he loves us. oh 
we are his portion. And we are his portion and he is our prize. Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If grace is a notion, we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss in my heart turns wildly inside of my chest and I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way sing it out he loves us he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh
come be the fire inside of me until you and I are one. Say that again. Come be the fire inside of me. Come be the flame. Until you have it all, my heart is yours. You sing, come be the fire. Come be the fire inside of me. Come be the flame upon my heart. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Tom Finney up to give his testimony, but also um, a message through his testimony as well. Thank you. All right. I'm going to move around a little bit, so move this out of the way here. Uh, let me give a talk. I'm. Uh, Thank you for that uh, worship. It was wonderful, just getting us closer to the Spirit of God. And uh, isn't it great to worship God? Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Um, I'm going to start my testimony in the famous words of Maria from The Sound of Music. It's a beautiful place to start, right? ABC. All right, so I'm going to start in the beginning. Uh, origin of my faith and how Jesus Christ has changed my life. Um, I start when I was uh, young and really didn't know Christ. I worked uh, with a family raised in a large family, youngest of six kids, um, and raised in the Catholic faith. Um, I, I knew God, but I didn't really have a relationship with God. Um, I went to church because my parents made me, and I served as an altar boy uh, over at St. Thecla's Church in, in uh, Pembroke. Um, as the youngest of six and always uh, interested in math and science, being a math nerd, uh, I was a very curious child and asked a lot of questions. Uh, it was implied in my upbringing that life was about performing one good work after another and that the way to heaven is the way to earn your way to heaven. Um, so what is the meaning of life? That's what we all ask when we're, we're 10 year olds, right? What's the meaning of life? Um, and you can look for this answer in all the wrong places. Um, trying to impress your friends in school, trying to be the fastest, trying to be the coolest kid, right, in, high, in junior high, and uh, getting into drugs, alcohol, maybe personal achievements, trying to do the best you can. In 1979, there was a, a book that came out by Douglas Adams called The, 1970, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, so I don't know if anyone else, anyone else a nerd that read that book? Okay, good, all right, good, all right, good. Got some other nerds in the room. All right, all right, so in this book, there's a supercomputer that over a period of 7.5 million years has calculated that the meaning of life is the number 42. So being a math nerd, I love numbers, simple numbers, but alas to all you science fiction fans, the author has already admitted that he picked that number randomly. So that's... <laughs> Not the meaning of life. So in 1983, the film by Monty Python came out, The Meaning of Life. I don't know if anyone ever saw Monty Python and was a fan. Okay, all right. 
<laughs> so according to Monty Python, um, the, the meaning of life is to try to be a nice as a person, uh, to avoid eating too much fat, um, read a good book every now and then, and, and then get some walking in, okay? and try to live together in peace and harmony with people of all creeds and nation. That's kind of my jest for that. All right, so being an old school guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to turn to this and do a little old school stuff here. So as a kid, and you're growing up, you're plotting, you're thinking mathematical, and you're trying to plot things out, so, is life like a circle? And all of us are a point, and we get born into a different point along the circle, and we walk the circumference of the circle, and that's our walk in life, and life is a big circle. In this, in this plan, as we all die, we all radiate toward the center. Not, okay, this doesn't make any sense. In this plan, there's no consequences for our action, and we'll all go to the same place. That doesn't make a lot of sense, so get rid of that. So let's plot out an XY graph here, okay? And if we all start life at the interval between X and Y, okay? And then every decision that we make in life is either a wrong decision or it's a right decision. You can even use the Star Wars force, right? The, the, the force be with you, all right? And if you make the right decision, then you're gonna go up. And if you make a wrong decision at any point in time, you either can go up or down, but you go down if you make the wrong decision. And then we all end life at a different X, Y integral because nobody lives the same age, right? So that doesn't really make sense either. I'll explain that a little bit why, okay? But as a kid, you're thinking of these things. You're thinking, what does life mean? What is the meaning of life? All right. Ooh, okay, it's a loud one. Okay, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's not the meaning of life, no. Uh, so, and certainly the, there are outside influences that you can have, uh, you know, that kind of allow you to make those decisions whether you're going up or down along that path. In the Bible, in Job uh, 1, 20 and 21, Job loses his entire family, his wife and all his children. And this is his, his quote from, from the, the book of Job. At this, Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. I think Job is giving us the meaning of life and its purpose if we look closely at this example. So we'll go back to that, okay? We're all born into this world, flesh and blood. We're all born as newborn babies. We eat, we sleep, we poop, we get burped, and we get gas in us, all right? It's all about our needs. We're all born helpless, selfish little beings that are living off our moms. So I think the first hint at what the meaning of life comes from looking at a mother. Perhaps a mother is, um, Totally, the baby's totally dependent on the mother for care, and for the good mother provides all these needs despite being sleep deprived, recovering from the painful birth experience, and having all her personal independence shattered by this newborn responsibility that she has. But it's not about her in this example, it's about her baby. Um, so if we are going along our course of life without any outside influence or spiritual presence, we continue thinking that life is all about us. It's about having fun. It's about being all you could be. That was a commercial uh, the, the Army used to do. It's about checking off our abstract list. I mean, all, anyone here a list maker? Who makes abstract list, likes to check off the list, all right? Um, ultimately, it's to please ourselves. Um, initially, it might have been to please your parents, but ultimately it becomes to please yourself. Okay? At a young age, I wanted to be a veterinarian. My total focus became upon achieving this job. I learned everything I could to accomplish, every job I took, 
Everything I did in school was focused on that goal, was to become a veterinarian. Um, along that career path, you develop relationships with people, classmates, friends, family. Um, it was during this time I met my wife, Carolyn, uh, my sophomore year of veterinary school. I was working 12 hours a week at a job in Jamaica Plains, uh, probably studying over 70 hours a week. Um, it doesn't leave a lot of time for development of a relationship, um, but you make it work. You, that's what you do when you're young. Um, I was living in a farmhouse with seven other people um, at a time and going to school out in Grafton, Massachusetts. And this, this is the first thing that really influenced my life greatly was um, it was a housemate I had named Barry. He was only in the house for a couple of months and he barely knew me, but he was a Christian and he was going to a Bible study and he invited me to the Bible study. He didn't know me from Adam, but he invited me. So I encourage all of us, um, don't be afraid to reach out and plant a seed in someone. You never know what's going to happen to that person. And uh, I, I don't know where Barry is to this day, um, but I know in my heart that you know, Barry did what God had told him to do, which is to, to plant a seed. So I went to the Bible study with him. Um, and I started going to church with, with my uh, fiance, Carolyn. And we were dating, da and partly it was to hang out with her, because uh, I didn't have a lot of time uh, available, so time was precious. It took about 10 months going to church and with her every Sunday, and singing worship songs, and hearing God's spoken word before my program brain and my heart had a major breakthrough. Life is not about me, Tom. It's about him. Um, the Holy Spirit came upon me very powerfully in a, in a service, and he figuratively and literally planted me on my face, prostrate before God. A great wind blew through my body and rocked my foundation. I prayed that day and I called out to God and I gave my life to Christ at that time. I started reading the Bible and serving the church as an usher and a greeter. And I spent time camped out in Romans. That was one of my first books I spent out time in. The great flaw in my thinking of seeking perfection was exposed. Um, Romans 6.23 says we all fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. In Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's very powerful, and we are all sinners. Would my selfish, wretched me die for anyone, even a righteous person? And yet Christ died for me. So in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord... And you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And that's the salvation message that I, I learned. Um, I had given my life to Christ. I earned my veterinary degree and started a veterinary job. And I married my love, Carolyn, and started a family and a life with her. We had three children, but continued to make God a priority in our home. Um, we traveled from New Bedford at the time up to Boston to church every Sunday, and sometimes uh, midweek as well. My wife was a deacon uh, midweek. Um, but life with young children, I don't know if anyone else can, can uh, recognize this, uh, can be hard. Uh, certainly there's a lot of distractions in this world. There's work, there's sports, there's family. It can enable us to lose our focus. In Hebrews 2.1 it says, you must pay the most attention Therefore, to what we have heard, so we do not go astray. My, my second daughter, I was working a lot of hours. My second daughter, Rebecca, started having seizures when she was seven years old. She was on multiple seizure medications, and all they did was make her sleep or incapable of learning in school. At her peak, she was having 40 seizures a day. Uh, my wife, Carolyn, is an amazing woman. And uh, she's my super, superwoman, really. That's Carolyn right there, superwoman. Um, you have not seen a mother bear when it comes to protecting her children. That's my wife, all right? And she would do anything and even argue with and many doctors as she could to get what needed to get done for her. So we ended up at Children's Hospital after many, many referrals um, and sought out some of the best uh, people in the world. And uh, Rebecca ended up having brain surgery. She actually had three brain surgeries uh, over a course of a couple of months. And uh, she was camped out at Children's Hospital, and I was still working. And 
I was kind of hiding from this whole experience in my work. Uh, I didn't know as a dad. Dads like to fix things, and I couldn't fix this. So I prayed to God and went to work, and Carolyn did a lot of this on her own up in Boston. And um, at this time, our church was incredibly supportive, and there was a young lady named Celeste, um, and she stayed with us and helped us take care of our two children. We had a newborn in Nathan, and uh, we had Emily, who was older. She was literally about nine years old. Um, and she, she explained to us that God had impressed on her our need, and she wanted to serve God by aiding us in child care. Uh, and through his, this critical time, she stayed with us in our home and helped out with the child care. And uh, again, it, you can't underestimate what a church family can, can do and help out and support people. It's one of our purposes as a church is to make sure we're supporting each other and encouraging each other, especially when people are in need, and families in need. Um, so after her third and final brain surgery, to have the area of her brain resected because of all the seizures, my wife and I were in recovery with our daughter, Rebecca, and she came out of surgery, the last surgery, looking more dead than alive. Her face was ashen. She didn't have any color to it. Her forehead was so sunken that it was literally sitting on her eyes so she couldn't open her eyes at all. And being a dad, it was very emotional, okay? I thought, I thought that, you know, I didn't know if she was going to live. And I prayed out to God. I said, God, please help me. Please help make me know that Rebecca's going to be okay. And just like Elijah in the first Kings, when after all the crazy commotion that was going on in Elijah's life, God spoke in a gentle whisper. I think Pastor Pete spoke about this a couple weeks ago. And um, he told me very clearly, do not be afraid. She's going to be fine. Be at peace. In clear English words that even I can understand. Um, and I was completely at peace. I had complete shalom in my life, complete peace in my life at that experience that God spoke to me. And uh, it's just an incredible feeling to have, uh, to hear God's word and to hear his presence in your life. And I was immediately at peace. I was able to be with my wife, Carolyn, and, and hold her hand and feel at peace. Um, so Rebecca has had one further seizure in the week following the surgery, and she has never had another seizure again. All right. So she's... Praise God. But life gets busy again. I tried to live my life in Colossians 3.23. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if working for the Lord and not for man. It's an older version, but that's what I've memorized. Working all the time, serving other people, pets, and their owners. I was not being the husband or the father I should have been. I didn't have real good work balance. Um, God and my family were not my first priority, at least it's not spending time with them. It was more about being the bread earner of the family and supporting the family in that way. And my wife and I were unsettled in many ways. And we decided as a couple to homeschool our children. Um, we did for a lot of reasons, but Rebecca was struggling in school. Just because of the brain surgery, she couldn't retrieve words. Um, and she had gone from reading really well before the surgery to starting all over kind of again, and it was really hard for her. And then our oldest daughter was really getting bored in school and just wasn't really, um, she needed something more. So we decided to homeschool and gave Cal and I a chance to be a real team again. And, uh, you know, just to be with our kids to start each day in worship and to start each way, day the way we're supposed to, which is with God first. Uh, and so we became teachers and focused, and we, and we had a, a, a purpose together. We homeschooled for multiple years, and God provided us the needed energy and the joy that we needed. Our kids were growing up fast then, and Emily and Rebecca were teenagers and tweens, and I was led to take a week off from work and be a counselor for them at a, a, a junior high camp at SNED in, in Rhode Island. Um, and there were about 200 youths in this, in this uh, camp, and it was intense. If anyone's ever been to a sleepover junior high camp for five straight days, being uh, in the cabin with the boys, uh, sleeping, not sleeping, forget about sleep. Um, basically, you're with the kids 24 hours, five straight days, and you're running from chapel to game activities, to chapel to game activities, to 
somewhere you kind of get a, a little rest. Um, so we were at chapel one night, and I was called to the counselor to the altar to pray for the youth, the whole youth, not the 200 of them, not just my group. Um, I had been a Christian for 14 years, and I still felt like a newborn in my faith. I was uncomfortable and had no confidence. I could speak and pray. I, I didn't think I could pray the right words, and I, I called out to Jesus for help in prayer. And he answered in probably the most profound way in my life that I've ever had. As, as, a youth came, as a youth came forward in prayer, the Holy Spirit filled me with prophecy, wisdom, and knowledge. As they came forward to prayer, I actually knew what they were going to say before they said it. And then when I went to pray for them, I was basically a bystander. The words coming out of my mouth were me. I didn't create them in my mind. They were just God flowing through me. I was a vessel. I was just a clay pot. Um, I have never felt such powerful transformation in my life than that experience I had at camp. Uh, my desire to be with God increased immensely. Uh, I began teaching in the children's ministries and have taught for over 20 years uh, in children doing camps, uh, high school camps, junior high school camps, and then teaching over at a larger church before I came to this body during COVID uh, and started to be here. So I began speaking in tongues in my uh, worship, my prayer time, my devotions. I learned that week at camp about being crazy for God. I shared this message a little last August following the missions trip. Um, at the time, there was a song that came out by Chris Wright called Love Like Crazy, and it goes a little bit like this. I heard a rumor that love will make you crazy, but is it true? That's no rumor. Look at the crazy things that love will make a Jesus do. You know, the friends he chose were thought to be outrageous. Yes, they were. And you can even find him touching the contagious. Yeah. And the craziest is how he chose to save us, save us. He gave his life away, then he had to go and say, got to love the same way that I love you. Love like crazy. So that was kind of... <laughs> now, this is where my wife would say, I am a dork, okay? <laughs> and I always answer this the same way. Well, I'm your dork. <laughs> and I'm a dork for God. Um, the, the C for uh, crazy, C-R-A-Z-E-Y, is captivated by his presence. And I try to live my life this way, staying captivated in the presence of God. Uh, Hebrews 12, 2 says, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Um, the only way you're going to do this is spending time with God. And that includes in prayer, that includes reading the word. And it, it's a daily journey. Um, and there are times you're going to feel his presence very strongly and times you're not going to. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. We have to have that connection. Spend time with Jesus. Walk with him daily. Pray continuously throughout the day. And spend time in God's word. The R stands for radical in your expression. Too many of us fear. We have fears of speaking publicly, fears of falling on our face, fear of just doing the wrong, making the wrong decision in our lives. God has freed us of that fear. We don't have to have that fear. We don't have to live uh, with that type of thing. S surrender yourself. Give all of yourself to God. Be un uninhibited in your worship of him. Don't think about what others might think, but dance for God like David danced for God with joy. David's a man after my own heart. Write poetry to God. It's a song, uh, this, is one, this is for Rebecca, my, my, my daughter who had the surgery. This was one of her favorite songs growing up. And it goes, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. You broke my chains, now I can't reach my hands. I just want to praise you. 
I just want to praise you. That's by Mary Mary. So it's, that was Rebecca. She liked a little gospel. All right. So the A uh, in crazy stands for being anointed in the Holy Spirit. If you've given your life to Christ, Jesus told his apostles in Acts 1, 4 to 9, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I call this the three P's of Pentecost, the promise, the power, and the proclamation. We all have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We just have to recognize the Holy Spirit's presence in us. And then we all are required, our job is to go forth and, and teach others about Christ. That's the proclamation. So Jesus Christ's death on the cross was not the beginning of Christianity. It's actually, uh, it's, not, it's not the end of Christianity, it's the beginning of Christianity. We're called forth to go forth and deliver his message. Um, and it's still Jesus but our, his message is what we're called to bring forth to the generations coming after us. That's why I love the children. Luke eleven thirteen says, if, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Ask for the Holy Spirit and the power of his gifts in your prayer. The Holy Spirit will minister to your heart and to your head. Galatians 5, 22 and 25 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Z stands for being zealous for others. And... This is an area of my heart that God is working the hardest on right now. It's just trying to be zealous for others. Certainly in my work, it's great to be zealous, but I'm, I'm real calling to do more missions, and I had the opportunity with Bob last year to go on a missions trip here in the church, and uh, we're going to go again this year. I encourage all of you who haven't done a missions trip to go forth and do missions. Uh, it's incredible to serve other people um, and be passionate about it, to love others as Jesus has loved us. In every opportunity we have throughout the day, pray for opportunities to love other people, to listen to them, lean into them, become more effective at discerning their needs. And the Y stands for yielded to his will. And this last letter in crazy brings me full meaning back to the circle of, of life, which Job demonstrated for us in the very beginning of my message. And, and the purpose of life is this. Humankind's purpose is, is to glorify God. We are commanded in Luke 10, 27, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and your strength, and to love your neighbors as yourself, to have that vertical and horizontal relationship. Okay? True worship, um, life is about serving God by worshiping Him in everything we think and do. That's pretty hard when you think about it. I mean, how can we control our, our thinking world? Um, we're all going to stumble. And we're all going to fall short. And that's where perfection just, you never can reach perfection. But we have reached perfection because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. He's washed us all white as snow. True worship is simply the love of God. God wants our love. He wants our everything. In Isaiah 43, 21, it, it says, The people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. William Temple was an English priest who lived a hundred years ago. And he's known for his work in social justice. He believed in the rights of all people, regardless of their wealth, regardless of their social status. And this, this um, really is a great quote on worship. Worship is the submission of all our nature to God. It is the quickening of conscience by His holiness, the nourishment of your mind with His truth, 
the purifying of imagination by his beauty, the opening of the heart through his love, the surrender of the will through his purpose. And all of this gathered up in adoration, the most selfish emotion of which our nature is capable. And therefore, the chief remedy for self-centeredness, the source of all actual sin. That's really the battle that we face every day is the battle of self-centeredness, how to get rid of ourself and how to be servant and to be like Jesus did. The more we let God take us over, the more truly ourselves we become is what C.S. Lewis wrote. I love C.S. Lewis and so many quotes you can have from him. Are we submitting all of ourselves to him? Are we worshiping God with all our mind, with our eyes, our tongue, our heart, and our hands and feet? As we prepare ourselves for Easter in the next couple of weeks, are we truly giving our whole worship to him, all of us to him? Thank you, Lord. The words from my lips and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. I'm going to pray for, uh, and ask for Kathy and Roy to come back and lead us in some songs of worship. Okay? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this time of worship, Lord. I just ask in Jesus' name that you will bless this time. Help us to become closer to you. Help us to really dig in to you, Lord, to pull at our heartstrings, to pull at all of us, Lord. And help us to give our complete selves to you and complete adoration to Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. shepherd I shall not want in green pastures he makes me lie down he restores my soul and leads me on for his name for his great name surely goodness Surely mercy right beside me all my days. I will dwell in your house forever and bless your holy
And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are on my side. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me. going to go into a time of prayer uh, before we close out the song with two songs. So please bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts to you. We lift our hearts to you with anything and everything that is burdening us. Father, we know that there is so much that just causes us to, to hold these burdens that we don't need. So, Father, I pray that this evening we lift our burdens to you. We give them fully over to you. We surrender them to you. We surrender our whole selves to you. Father, you, we know that you are our strength in difficult times. In your almighty name, we pray for people who are dealing with mental health, Lord. We know that it is another pandemic within this pandemic that has been going on. And Father, we pray that you just comfort them, that they just know that you are near, that your, your presence just surrounds them, Father, and help to guide them wherever they may need to go to find relief from whatever mental health crisis they are facing at that time. And let them know that they are loved, they are cared for, Father, not only by you, but by your body. Let us reach out to them and let them know that they are cared for. And Father, we thank you that in all things, in all circumstances, you are good. Father, we know it's sometimes hard to see that, but we, we know that you are good always. And Father, we want to thank you for all the good. We want to thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. I feel like we don't thank you enough for what you do. We don't deserve anything, and yet you gave us everything. Father, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. There's nothing greater that you could have done. But Father, you did. You said, no, I want to save you. You are my children. And you sent your son to die a criminal's death for us, and we thank you for that. We give you praise for that, Father. And Father, we thank you for all that you're doing around the world today that we don't, we don't get to see. Father, we know that 
everything that is good comes from you. And Father, maybe we're not looking for the good in the world, but I pray that we open our eyes to see all that you are doing in this world. Father, we thank you. And we just continue to thank you for everything. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Essence of beauty, essence of beauty, and all that is right. The King of all glory, heaven's pure light. Your kingdom forever. Your kingdom. 
kingdom forever. Love shining bright. God of all splendor. Wonder and might. Your kingdom forever. Your kingdom forever. Love shining bright. God of all splendor. Wonder. His strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. this evening. Um, thank you, Roy and Kathy. <laughs> thank you, Tom. We are excited for next, uh, next relevant service, which will be on April 2nd at 5.30 p.m. We have, uh, for leading us in worship, we have Bruno and possibly some special guests, some, possibly some teens from our church. It would be awesome. Um, and we have a speaker who's giving her testimony. Um, originally, the first Sunday is going to be a testimony Sunday, and third, you'll have me. But it's kind of reversed this month, so I apologize. Um, so next, uh, next relevant service, we have a young woman named Elizabeth Palmer who is going to be giving her testimony. 
And she actually also just got back from a mission trip from Tanzania. So she might be able to kind of move a little bit of that in there as well. So we're excited to hear her testimony and all that God is doing in her life as well. So thank you very much for being here again. And until next time, God bless.